In this video, we're going to be showing you some of the more common operative instruments that you'll be exposed to while you serve with the University of Florida College of Dentistry. It's going to be important for you to be familiar with their names and their function, as the dentists that you're going to be working with are going to be asking you for these instruments, and they're going to be using them as they provide care to their patients. So, as we begin, the first thing to understand is the placement of the instruments on the dental instrument tray. You will be passing these instruments to the doctor and then replacing them back on the tray. So that you can do this efficiently, you must set up the tray such that you know exactly where every instrument is. As you use them, you will then clean them and put them back in their place. This way, if the doctor needs the instrument again, you'll know exactly where to go to get them and pass them over efficiently, already having been cleaned. The instrument shown here is the dental mirror. The dental mirror is principally used for examination, to visualize, but it's also used to reflect, to move tissues so the doctor can see better. As you pass this instrument, always be sure to pass it so that the mirror face is clean. That way the doctor can most efficiently uh, use the instrument uh, during the course of care. From time to time, the dentist is going to want the patient to be able to see things in the mouth. When they do, they're going to ask you to give the patient the patient mirror, and this should not be confused with the dental mirror, as you can see here in this example. This is an example of a dental explorer. This particular instrument is called a shepherd's hook explorer because of its shape. This instrument is typically double-ended with either a different style explorer on the other end, whereas this instrument is designed to have a periodontal probe at the other end. The periodontal probe is a measuring device graduating in one millimeter increments and is designed to measure the depth of the gap between the tooth and the gingiva. Typically, a number between one and three millimeters indicates healthy tissues, but when the numbers increase, particularly greater than five millimeters, this often indicates a loss of tooth to gingiva attachment, and this is called periodontitis and is evidence of bit periodontal disease. The rubber dam system. This system is designed to isolate the teeth from the rest of the oral cavity. This is done because control of moisture is very important to the long-term success of dental restorations. The rubber dam clamp is placed over the tooth to secure the rubber dam material to the, to the tooth. The rubber dam clamp forceps are used to place the rubber dam clamp on the tooth. Latex or non-latex material. This is what actually keeps the moisture away from the teeth, the rubber dam material. The rubber dam frame stretches the rubber dam material so the dentist and the staff can easily visualize the teeth. This next instrument are called college pliers or also called cotton forceps or in some circles are called pickups. These are a multifunctional instrument and they are used for grasping many small items both outside the mouth and inside the mouth. This is a spoon excavator. It's also called a caries excavator and it's a sharp rounded double-ended instrument used to remove soft and decayed dentin from within a tooth. This is a dical applicator. It's a small rounded single-ended instrument used to carry a paste-like material deep into a cavity preparation and whose function it is is to stimulate cells within the pulp to make new dentin. This is an example of an amalgam plugger also called a condenser whose function it is is to push or compress amalgam or even composite into a cavity preparation. The next several instruments as a group are called burnishers to burnish means to rub, to cause a luster or shine. This particular instrument is called an anatomical burnisher, also called an acorn, and this is to smooth in shape, but it's also used to burnish, and with composites, it can be used to contour or shape the composite prior to curing. This is called a ball burnisher, and the other end is called a football burnisher, and these designs are used to burnish 
or to polish by forceful rubbing against the surface of metal. Plastic filling instruments are a class of instrument that are used to give shape and to develop anatomy during the placement of composite restorations. This is but one example as there are many many different kinds and different shapes of PFIs. These two instruments are actually different ends of the same instrument and they are called a discoid cleoid amalgam carver. The double-ended instrument is for carving and giving anatomical shape to a setting amalgam. One end is round, thus the name discoid, and the other end is pointed, named cleoid. This is a one-half Hollenbeck. It's a double-ended amalgam carving instrument. It is used to carve and to shape, to give anatomical structure or shape to amalgam, along with the other instrument, the discoid cleoid. This is an example of a cement spatula. Many materials are required in small quantities to be placed within a tooth as part of the tooth's restoration. Often the material is a powder and a liquid that must be mixed together, or it is in the form of two paste that is also mixed together. Once mixed, they are placed within the tooth, whereupon the material sets and gets hard. This is a very common instrument and frequently found on the dental tray. What you see here is the Toffelmeyer matrix band and its retainer. What, this is one of many varieties of systems used to create a temporary wall around a tooth to allow a restoration to be played and keeping the restoration material within the confines of the tooth. A partner to the matrix band is the wooden wedge. A wooden wedge is a piece of wood or plastic used between the teeth to force the matrix band tight against the tooth. This will aid the band to keep the restorative material within the cavity preparation. It also slightly pushes the adjacent teeth apart to compensate for the thickness of the matrix band. Since it is a very important for the teeth to be in contact with each other after the restoration is completed. In this picture you can see that there are three materials flowable composite, etchant, and bonding agent at the bottom. We will be talking about each one to help you with your understanding. Acid etchant or etchant is a gel that is usually about 35 to 37 percent phosphoric acid whose function it is is to microscopically erode the surface of the enamel and the dentin thus increasing its surface area. This roughened surface in conjunction with a liquid acrylic resin that works to its way into the nooks and crannies of the etch surface it is then cured to form a solid to solid interface that aids tremendously in the retention of the restoration. The use of this material is vital to the long-term success of modern composite restorations. In these illustrations you can see that dentin and enamel by their nature are very smooth but once they are treated with acid etch usually for about 15 seconds they become very very rough and this is on a microscopic level about 25 microns. You can see in these images the change and then in this photomicrograph you can see the very rough surface that is created because of the acid etchant on the surface of the tooth. This is enamel. Dentin looks like it but somewhat different. This vial contains bonding agent, a class of material that has many formulations whose general function is to flow into the microscopic crevices in the dent and, and enamel surfaces that was created by the acid etchant previously mentioned. This liquid will flow into the spaces and when set is going to form a liquid to solid and this inner digitation is now a hard plastic that forms onto the tooth surface and this forms a strong mechanical bond that is used to keep a filling or restoration from falling out. The bonding brush is a small tufted single-ended instrument for the placement of the liquid bonding agent onto the etched surfaces of the prepared tooth. In this diagram you can see the three components of a restoration, the dentin or enamel which has been etched, the bonding agent which is cured into the crevices of the dentin or enamel, and then finally on top the composite. Flowable composite is a material chemically similar 
to bonding agent but containing many small particles of silicon dioxide also known as quartz. The silicon dioxide gives the resin hardness and color. With the only a small amount of silicon dioxide the material is like thick honey and will flow into small crevices but not so fluid as to move into all of the etched surfaces of the teeth after it's been etched, thus the need for bonding agent. Universal restorative material. Chemically, it too is like bonding agent and flowable composite, having several components, particularly acrylic polymers, otherwise known as plastics, fillers of silicon dioxide, and a variety of materials designed to increase the adhesion between the components and initiator chemicals to promote polymerization, meaning going from a soft to a hard surface when energy is introduced, specifically filtered white light. Illustrated here are two examples of dispensing guns for the capsules. The curing light is a device that emits light that is filtered and produces light of a specific light spectrum. This light energy initiates the polymerization process causing the bonding agent, the flowable composite, and the universal restorative material to become hard or set. The time that the curing light shines on the tooth is going to be dependent on the formulation that is set by the company and it's somewhere between 20 and 40 seconds. Next we'll be looking at instruments that are typically attached to the chair. They are the air water syringe, the saliva ejector, and the HVE or high volume evacuation. The air water syringe as seen here on the left is a device that will cause water, air, or a combination of both to flow. This is used to rinse and to dry structures within the mouth, which is also called the oral cavity. As fluids are placed into the mouth, it's also going to be necessary to remove them. This is called evacuation. We have two instruments that we use. One is the saliva ejector and the other is the HVE, also called the high volume evacuation. Both are used to remove water from the oral cavity. If there are large particles to remove, then we're going to be using the HVE. When there aren't, then we'll be using the saliva ejector. It's important to note that if you are not using the instrument at all, close the valve. Next we'll be looking at hand pieces. As illustrated here, there are two, and these are common in dentistry. On the left is the slow speed handpiece, and on the right is the high speed handpiece. Both of these instruments are powered by air pressure. The slow speed and high speed both are used to turn dental burrs, whose function it is is to cut tooth, or in some cases, in surgical cases, to cut bone. The slow speed runs at about 8,000 RPM, up to as high as about 30,000 RPM. High speed hand pieces, on the other hand, can run as high as 400,000 RPM. Typically though, at working speeds they are about 250,000 RPM. The major difference is that high speeds, by their nature, will tend to cut enamel, whereas the slow speed hand pieces will tend to cut dentin, but they also are used to polish surfaces, they're used to cut plastic, they're used to cut a variety of different materials. Besides the differences in their speeds, the high speed is a single unit and you can tell right away because it does not come apart. If on the other hand you notice an instrument that does come apart, such as the one showing here, this is going to be a slow speed and you'll notice that they have different heads. Slow speeds are consisting of two parts, the motor which is seen on the left and the heads which are seen on the right and above. The contralateral head which is seen above and the straight nose piece which is centered in the photograph are used for different kinds of burrs and they have very different functions. Typically the contra angle will be used inside the mouth and very often you will find that the straight nose piece will use larger burrs which are used outside the mouth such as for trimming dentures. There are dozens and dozens of different burrs, and each one has a different role to play in the provision of dental care. In general, they are used to cut tooth structure and restorative materials, whether that be in the mouth or also outside the mouth, such as trimming and adjusting and polishing 
dentures. Articulating ribbon is either plastic or paper ribbons, typically colored red or black, and they're inked on both sides. And after a restoration is completed, the restoration is trimmed back so that the teeth will fit together properly, and the restoration is not high. When a dentist checks to see that the occlusion is proper and the teeth are not hitting prematurely, the dentist will have the patient bite down onto the ribbon and tap their teeth together several times and then put their teeth together and chew gently left or right. This will cause marks on the teeth. Areas that are excessive in their contact will show up as dark marks and these areas would then be adjusted. The last thing to look at today are those things that we call consumables. In dentistry there are many many things that are used on a single time basis. Two that we use with patients and that you will find on your trays routinely are cotton rolls and 2 by 2 gauze. Both are made out of cotton. The cotton rolls are used to reflect the tissues, to push the cheeks, to push the tongue back out away from the teeth, and then to help with the restoration. 2 by 2 gauze are used routinely uh, to clean the instruments during the course of procedure or if there's something on the patient's lips that we might use a 2 by 2 for that as well, but principally they're used by the assistant to clean instruments during a procedure. As we conclude this presentation, we hope that this information will be useful to you as you become oriented to working in the clinic. If you have any questions, be sure to ask your staff or your faculty and they will be happy to help you with the identification and the function of these various instruments. Thank you.